In the previous episode, I implemented the linear collision between two capsules that looked like this. And in this one, I will implement the rotational collision, which will look like this. Before I start the rotational collision, here is a recap of how the linear one works, because I want to get an overview what variables do I need to implement the equations for simulating the collision. The first thing I want to know is the collision normal, which is the unit vector perpendicular to the surface where the two objects collide. I already used that before the collision response, because by the penetration resolution, the two objects were moving apart from each other along this normal but I need to use it again because I need the difference between the two objects velocity vectors which is the relative velocity projected on this normal to get the separating velocity before the collision and the value of the separating velocity will get multiplied by minus one time elas times elasticity after the collision and I need to take the difference between the separating velocity's value before and after the collision. And this amount of the difference will need to be distributed between the two objects proportional to their inverse masses, for which first I divide it by the sum of the inverse masses. And that's how I will get the impulse, the magnitude of the impulse. And then if I multiply the normal unit vector by this impulse, then I will get the impulse vector and the change of the velocity for the individual objects will be the impulse vector multiplied by each object's inverse mass. And that's how I can calculate the delta V for the two objects that are colliding. And this is a slide that I'm going to follow through for the rotational collision. I will put a link in the description for this slide. And I'm starting with the linear part here as well. First of all, what I see here is the ratio between the relative velocity along the normal vector after the collision and before the collision multiplied by minus one. And the result will be the coefficient of restitution. That's what I called elasticity in my code. And one slide later, what I see here, that's the change of the separating velocity. This is the value before minus the value after. And here it's dividing by the sum of the inverse masses. And the result of that will be the magnitude of the impulse, which here is represented by the J symbol. And after I get the magnitude of the impulse, I need to multiply it by the unit vector, the normal unit vector, that will be the impulse vector, and divide it by the mass, which is the same as multiplying it by the inverse mass. And I either add or subtract this value from the original velocity, depending if the normal vector is looking towards the object or is it looking to the opposite direction. And now that I could decode the slide terminology, I can move on to where the rotational collision starts. Here the angular velocity is going to change if the point of contact is not on the line of the impact, which means it's not along the collision normal. And my ultimate goal will be to calculate the new value of the angular velocity. So here the first new expression will be the closing velocity. This is the velocity of a single point on an object. It's the sum of the linear velocity and the rotational velocity. So if you imagine the object moving along without rotating, then it only has the linear velocity. And if it's not moving anywhere, but it's rotating around the center, then it only has rotational velocity. And the sum of these two will result the closing velocity. The linear velocity is the same for every point on the object, but the rotational one depends on how far the point is from the rotation center. So the vector that points to a specific point from the center of rotation is the collision arm, and its cross product with the angular velocity will result the 
rotational velocity in that specific point. And the first step for me to implement the rotational collision will be to find the two objects closing velocities. And here the separating velocity will be the difference of the closing velocities projected on the normal. Before this, it was the difference of the linear velocities and the value of the j will change as well. And my step two for implementing will be finding out the new j value. Then here is the formula of how to get the new values of the angular velocities. I take the cross product of the collision arm and the normal unit vector multiplied by the impulse and I either add or subtract it to the original angular velocity. Now this here is something special. This will be the so-called moment of inertia. This will be a new property for the capsule class. Here is what Wikipedia says about the moment of inertia. It measures the extent to which an object resists rotational acceleration about a particular axis and is the rotational analog to mass. Mass moments of inertia have units of dimension m all square. So the value of this depends on the object's size and its mass. And I try to find how to calculate it for a capsule, but the closest thing I could find was the rectangle. It equals height square plus width square times mass divided by 12. I don't really know why, but that's what Wikipedia says. So I thought the best thing I can do is that I handle the capsule as a rectangle, like a bounding box around the capsule, and I will give the value of the inertia property in the capsule class based on that. So the height will be two times radius, and the width will be the magnitude of the central line segment plus two times radius to reach the edges of the capsule. It probably won't be very accurate, but it will do the job. And I also created an inverse inertia property, which will be one over inertia, except when the mass is zero, to avoid dividing by zero. In that case, the inverse inertia will be zero as well. And the reason I did that is that if I go down and see how the new value of the J needs to be calculated, here I see that I will need to use the inverse inertia instead of the inertia. And so that I won't calculate it over and over again, I give it as a property by the instantiation of the capsule object. Now this expression for the impulse, maybe it looks a bit overwhelming, but I know the value of every variable that I'm I need to use. So I only have to go through this step by step. This T here, that stands for transpose, that would be useful for three dimensions, but in 2D, this expression is just a scalar number, so it doesn't matter now, this transpose, because the transpose of a scalar is the same scalar. Before I go and implement this J value, here's a summary of what I need to do. At the end of the collision response function, I will need to update the two linear velocities, which I have already done, and the two angular velocities, that will be the step three in this collision handling process. Then I go back to the pictures for another recap. And here is what I need to do. The first step is calculating the closing velocity, which will be the sum of the linear velocity and the cross product of the angular velocity and the collision arm. I will calculate this collision arm by adding this vector and this vector together. So I get this red one here. Step two would be calculating the J value, the impulse variable. I just created the inertia property in the capsule class for this and all the other variables are already known. And then here is the last step. I get the cross product of the impulse vector and the collision arm and I multiply it by the inverse inertia and then I either add it or subtract it from the original angular velocity.
and at the end I will get the new value of the angular velocity after the collision and now I'm going to write the code for that I go to the collision response function this is here and I start with the first step which is getting the closing velocities so first I calculate the collision arm vector then I get the rotational velocity by getting the cross product between the angular velocity and the collision arm and then the closing velocity will be the sum of the linear velocity vector and the rotational velocity vector and I do that for both capsules. For getting the J value I will need to use the difference of the closing velocities to get the relative velocity and not the difference of the linear velocities as I have done so far but once I have done that calculating the difference between the separating velocity before and after will work the same way then to get the new value of the impulse I need to add these augmentation variables from both objects but then the impulse vector will still work the same way multiplying the normal by the impulse magnitude getting the impulse was the second step and the third one will be calculating the new linear and new angular velocities the linear is already done and as for the angular one I need to multiply the inverse inertia by the cross product of the collision arm and the impulse vector I add this value for the first capsule and I subtract it from the second capsule angular velocity property and as far as I can judge that's all I needed to do in order to implement the rotational collision all right there are two mistakes I made one is just a typo this should be velocity 2 and not velocity 12 and the other one is that the inertia property in the capsule class is using the length property but the length property is defined after the inertia so I need to put the length before I create the inertia otherwise it cannot be used for defining the inertia value and this should be all that's how the capsules are colliding with rotation it's hard to check if it's 100% accurate but it definitely doesn't look bad so I can set back this good old light green filling and comment out the drawing the line part and see the collision again it's a bit I got used to the one with the line now this light green looks a bit weird but that's not the point point is that the collision is working fine which is good so I still have a few ideas about how can I improve this engine so this is definitely not the last video about it the next thing will be probably adding a new shape the OBB that stands for oriented bounding box and yeah that's it for now